Hey guys, Tyrup here, bringing you this 15th installment of Micro Tips and Tricks for Company of Heroes 2. First up, we have Escaping Barbed Wire. A mistake that became more common after the fixes to ghosting a while ago is getting your engineer stuck when wiring off cover. And if you can't vault the cover that you just wired off to get out, this can put you way behind in the early game, especially if the squad ends up dying. The first line of defense is paying attention. If you notice one model next to the cover and three models outside, there is a good chance they'll teleport onto that one model upon completion and get stuck. So when you notice this, make sure to reposition before continuing to plant the wire. We have construction work to do. For Austria pioneers who have access to sandbags, you can build a sandbag along the wire and then vault over it to get out. You could also build the sandbags with a nearby squad of Volksgrenadiers or riflemen with the correct commander, but not conscripts whose sandbags cannot be built on top of wire and can't be built close enough for the squad to vault over. The British can use the destroy cover ability to break free, though you may take a little bit of damage depending on the spacing. Next up is moving into cover automatically after construction completes. An issue when building cover is that once completed the squad will not reposition itself and this could leave one or two models without protection. However for conscripts it is downright dangerous as they very often end super bunched up upon completing construction and even though they are standing right next to the heavy cover they somehow have no protection from it making them extremely vulnerable to getting wiped. To avoid this after giving the order to build the cover hold shift and then right click drag in the correct direction. This way, once they have finished building cover, they will automatically reposition themselves behind it. And now, how to take less damage from units inside buildings. Building control in the early game can be extremely strong, especially before you have counters such as flamethrowers, snipers or mortars. However, you can approach some buildings, such as this one with two windows, and if you right click drag back on the building, your squad will move in extremely close range and this will only allow one of the windows to fire back at you. This can allow you to win an engagement that you would otherwise lose and it is most effective with strong close range squads such as Sturm Pioneers and Assault Grenadiers. Next up, some tips on the sniper aim time. Snipers have relatively long aim times and these get reset when they have to change direction. This means they can have trouble getting shots off on squads that are retreating past them. So if it is safe, try moving directly into their retreat path. This way the sniper won't have to turn around and has a much better chance of getting some shots off. I will get it for you. Eliminating the target. It will soon be out. You can also exploit this long aim time by literally running circles around the sniper and they will be unable to get a shot off. This can be useful in sniper wars or if you have a one model squad and you don't want to retreat it and risk getting it killed. Use the stalling time to bring up a unit and chase the enemy sniper away. Snipers, similar to handheld anti-tank weapons such as Panzer Shreks and Bazookas, have a different running animation for when they're on cooldown and when they're ready to fire again. Notice how just after a shot they run around with the gun on their shoulder, however when they're ready to fire again they carry it down by their waist. Use this to help time your shots as you're moving your sniper around. Here's a look at the Osir sniper, gun up on the shoulder after a shot, and then down by the waist ready to fire again. The British sniper has two ready to fire animations, carrying the gun in one hand or in two hands by his waist, and now up on his shoulder after a shot when the gun is not ready to fire. And finally Sticky Satchel Revenge. The penal troop sticky satchel can be devastating to vehicles and it very often results in the death of a light vehicle provided it took some PTRS damage before or after. So if your vehicle is going to die anyway, why not charge it at the enemy troops? Because the satchel charges explosion is so large it can also hit nearby units. This way you can potentially get a squad wipe on your opponent making the best of a bad situation as demonstrated here by Von Ivan's opponents. The explosion can also hit nearby vehicles resulting in engine damage, so try to avoid your own vehicles and drive close to your opponents if the opportunity arises. However, if the nearby vehicle is healthy 
and may not take enough damage to result in an engine critical. So keep an eye out for the penal troop satchel throwing animation and if you spot it, consider using this trick. That's it guys, be sure to like, subscribe and share it with your friends but not with your enemies. And if you enjoy my videos, please consider coming on board as a Patreon backer.